Hey, welcome to another live here. I'm Ollie Matthews, health coach for some of the world's busiest entrepreneurs. Now, first off, I apologize for going live three times and just sitting there like, uh, 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 what am I doing? For some reason, <clears throat> Restream wasn't playing ball. My camera was kind of overheating, so I've just had to switch the battery and do some different things. And hopefully, 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 this is all working now. It looks like there's audio and it looks like we're up and running. And it's ironic that on the topic of stress, this was a stressful life to start doing. And we talk about stress and it's the society that we live in, the world that we live in, the era that we live in, all these different things have put stress on our body. But how do we actually know that our body is under an amount of stress and how much stress is good, how much stress is bad? Because inevitably, if we weren't going through stress, our body wouldn't grow and prosper. How does a muscle grow? Well, the muscle, we, we curl the bicep curls, we break down the muscle and it then grows because it's been put under stress. So we do need a level of stress for us to start growing. And that's when we get acute stress. But when we get chronic levels of stress, so high levels of stress, stress, high levels of stress for extreme amount of times, that's when our body starts to kind of fight back. And one of the things I talk about all the time to clients and one of the markers that I go by is your heart rate variability your HRV. And what your HRV is, is if you are, if you're into music, like I am, and music production, and you think about the way music is made, and you have this computer programmed beat, and we have a thing called the metronome, which is like, which is on the beat, exactly on the beat. And the more stressed we are, the more our heart rate is going to be stingy on that beat really stuck to the track really quantized and kind of robotic as such but when our heart beats we think it's going to be the same it's like ba boom ba boom ba boom ba boom but there are slight variations between the beat stick with me hopefully you haven't gone a bit nuts by listening to me clicking and going ba boom or anything like that but the more variation there is between these beats the less stressed we are. And it's all well and good knowing that, but how do we actually measure this? Uh, we do need some technology to do it. Now, I've got the Apple Watch. You could be using a Fitbit. You could be using um, a Samsung watch, some Garmin's, look at doing a body battery. I've also got an Aura Ring. And you can use a Whoop Band. They're, they're quite good to do it. Or an app that I use called Weltery. And what we want to make sure we don't do is do our HRV on the spot in that moment, because that's going to depend whether if you're watching a horror film, you watch a Man United play this season and you're a Man United fan. If you're watching the Grand Prix and you're a Hamilton fan and you saw how crazy that was when Verstappen decided that it's not going to turn into the corner. Yeah. And or if you're a Norwich fan which has been pretty crazy as well, but that's just normal now. When you think your body's been under that amount of stress for such a long period of time that it would see it as normal. But if you mark your HRV on that exact period of time, you're going to get a marker of it there and then. But what a lot of people do, especially with an aura ring, is it gives you an average of your HRV over the night. So it's a time when you shouldn't be moving as much. Hopefully you're not waking up as much. And I believe your Fitbit does it as well. If you subscribe to um, one of the... Uh, Premium packages with Fitbit, I think it's like £7.99 a month or something like that. It gives you your HRV as an average over the time. And we get a good marker of what we're actually doing. So if you actually go onto your iPhone, other phones are available, but not for Apple Watch. And we actually go on heart rate variability data. I don't know if you guys can see it. It gives us this day. We want to actually go... Because on the day, you can see that throughout the day, mine's been up and down quite a bit. I don't know why my computer is squeaking at me. What's going on with my computer? It started squeaking at me in the corner. I think that was what was wrong with the camera. But if we click on the W at the top, 
See, my HRV is a little bit lower than where I want it to be. We want our HRV to be 60 and above all the time. And that is the average for this week. So at each of these markers, we can go on November the 12th, my average HRV for the day was 84, which is really, really good. So on Friday, I felt really, really good. And I think we actually stayed up a little bit later. My HRV on Saturday went down to 44. And then ironically, it went up to 55 on Sunday. We ate, I think we had a takeaway on Saturday night. And you can start to see these patterns when you drink alcohol, when you eat food you wouldn't normally eat or food that is maybe putting your blood sugar levels off or you have a late night or something like this. It'll be interesting to see because over this weekend, then I'll, I'll report back with the findings because Saturday night I've got a Freemasons event, which I'll probably be up to about 11.30 midnight. And Monday night, I actually drive to Ipswich to go to see Ant Middleton. Um, and so that show will probably finish about 11 o'clock. It's an hour or so to get back. So I probably won't be back until like midnight anyway, or just past midnight. So it'll be interesting to see how that reflects on your HRV. And it's something where you start getting into this pattern of when you have times where you have brain fog, when you have migraines, when you have poor sleep, when you eat bad food or bad food, when um, you struggle with weight loss, all these markers of stress are going to show up if you look at your HRV. So what I do with clients is that we track our HRV. So each client gets their own tracking sheet. It's pretty cool using this groundbreaking thing called Excel or Sheets. I need to learn how to use Excel. I've got someone to do it for me. I'm going to hold my hands up. But we track different things. But HRV is one of the biggest marker of stresses that people get. So when their HRV is going down, now what is good to know is that, or not good to know, but if someone's got PTSD, their HRV is usually running a little bit lower than average. But whilst we want it above 60, so if you track different things, you go on your Apple Watch app and you see your HRV, as we've said here, and it is below 60, that's when we know we've got some work to do. However, I've seen clients at 10, 15, 20, and just increasing it by 10 is a game changer for them. That's I hate the word game changer. Increasing it by 10 really improves their energy, improves their their awareness starts to break through a lot of brain fog. So it's just working on that trend to start going up. And I would say this is the number one marker that I would use above resting heart rate, above body temperature. Um, even like when, when we look into things like an overall readiness level on the aura ring, it can be deceiving to have like a 90, 95 readiness, but your HRV is like 35. And you can start to see patterns. So you can see where you can push your body. And one of the things that I speak to a lot of clients about, as you can imagine, is alcohol. Now, I'm one of the lucky ones, or unlucky, is that I don't like the taste of alcohol. That doesn't mean that uh, I wouldn't have alcohol, but if I liked the taste, I, I would probably have some beers, gluten-free ones, um, and I would probably have some alcohol if I liked the taste. But one of my clients, we've done some experiments to say that he can limit it. If he's on point with his sleep to a degree, he can have like three beers before he pushes his heart rate variability over the edge and it takes a day or two for him to recover. And you can start to see patterns if you eat food that your body isn't uh, is intolerant to. Like for example, if I eat gluten, my HRV will go down, bam, and it will probably stay there for like two or three days because I know I react to gluten. And then that goes to cross reactors, to dairy, to corn. If I was going to have um, wine or something like that, I'd have to make it sure it hadn't had any cross reactive to gluten in there. And um, this is where we can start looking a little deeper as to say that how stressed is my body actually feeling at the moment? And how can I improve it? You can look at hydration, you can look at consistency with your sleep, you can look at um, how hard are you working out? This is a great one. A great one. It came up on a podcast earlier, actually. Um, one of my, my good friends, Gemma, and we were talking on her podcast. And there's a lot of females, a lot of women that uh, listen to the podcast. And I see a kind of a recurring theme that happens. And it, men will do it as well. Men will, will spend hours in the gym or whatever it is as well, not to be sexist between men and women. But I see a lot of times people posting, oh, I've done double body pump or double spin or double BLT or whatever, legs, bums and tums, that sort of thing. 
And it's, it's great and it's awesome to see people working out. But I see a lot of already stressed people that aren't sleeping through the night, that are waking through the night, that are waking up feeling very groggy. And they're not able to lose weight. They're feeling sluggish. And we push this harder mentality. It's like we want to do more. We want to do more. But honestly, the secret that I have to help a client drop weight effectively, sleep through the night, and get rid of bloat is that if we can get their HRV up, we're going to improve our health exponentially. So if that is something that you do struggle with because you can't sleep through the night or anything like that, or you've struggled with weight loss or bloat or anything, um, have a look at your HRV. Have a look at your Apple Watch, have a look at your Fitbits, your Whoop bands, and see what these numbers actually are. Remember, we want an average over a period of time, and we want it 60 and above. If it's below that regularly, then we've got some work to do to, for us to improve it. And we improve it by being consistent over time with our food intake, good hydration, good habits, good movement levels. And remember, good movement, good exercise means not too much, just as low as not too little. And if you need help with that, you know exactly where I am. Drop me a message. Go to www.ojayhealth.com and we can arrange a time to chat about it and go through it. If you don't understand what I've said, again, drop me a comment, drop me a message and I'll try and explain it to you a little bit better. And I'd love to start seeing some of the pictures of your HRV and seeing it going up and everything like that. Uh, and uh, if it's been beneficial for you to watch this video, again, thank you for watching, and I'd love to hear about it. But have a great day, and um, hopefully your HRV starts going up. Take care.